Hello, my name is Felix Schaller. I'm now presenting the new tool NLX. It's about natural language parsing with a DSL, a domain specific language. So it's in particular a tool that, um, that is capable to parse natural language documents and convert it into a model. So what's the content of this presentation? It's about, first of all, the, a little bit of the history of natural language processing. And then we are going further into the domain-specific language that is capable to parse uh, natural language documents and convert it into a directed acyclic graph. So this thing. All right, then we go further into the background of the abstract syntax tree behind it and more about um, the grammar itself and then the syntax tree it's itself and then we are we are making a demo about the the program itself and then how is the current development status of the current prototype all right tighten your seat belts and uh, let's start with the presentation a little bit about the background, about natural language uh, history. It's already starting in the 1950s, so in the beginning of uh, compu com uh, computer science um, in, the 90s, 50, in the 1950s, uh, people already started, think about, started to think about natural language processing. And um, yeah, this is uh, still a problem that is not really solved. in. Uh, in the early days, um, people um, focused more on rule-based natural language processing that, that are focused on rules, that programmed rules that try to um, parse the, the natural language. And uh, in the current days, um, the, the science has turned over to the statistical um, natural language processing with uh, neural network neural networks and um, the reason is the following that because a rule-based natural language processing on is uh, handwritten and by that's very yeah complicated or, or very uh, uh, unflexible and then since the statistical, statistical revolution in the 1980s um, and especially today, most uh, natural language processing is on, based on machine learning, and these um, machine learning algorithms they um, try to solve um, language with um, neural ne neural networks that are able to interpret the um, meaning of the sentence. So um, we all know a bit about the background of machine learning, and um, especially neural networks and uh, these neural networks have certain problems that uh, you cannot uh, really understand what is the decision basis of these neural networks and also interpreting of the sentence is is in a way unsharp and, and more guessing so anyway the problems of the sharpness or the the um, the not not explicit resolution of the meaning of the sentence is is a problem i suggest or it cannot be entirely solved uh, with this approach therefore we believe that um, language has a true rule model based um, core by nature but you have to uh, look at it in a different perspective especially under the aspect of context building so natural language has a strong constraint or strong association to the context it's uh, it's it's about without that uh, you cannot really solve a natural language and that's why you need a context to really solve natural language and then it also is very explicit uh, in its expression and can therefore be solved rule based and that's the, the, the approach we want to go so we we want to go back to the to the old days go back go 
further in that direction but with different approaches right just a little bit of um, nice images um, what is currently done in the um, natural language processing in the current days that you're trying to create clusters of word meanings and those um, associated with um, vectors in the with from 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 neural networks and therefore you can associate uh, certain meanings um, in the context of uh, or in with these neural networks also with uh, kind of um, yeah this is uh, for instance a um, tool chain or from a from a natural language processing um, pipeline so so it has different modules that are uh, processing then the language and then go further so natural language passes passing what's what's the goal first we have to uh, solve the grammar or we build the grammar uh, the grammar of the domain specific language that creates a abstract syntax tree for us then this um, is tokenizing um, all the um, the, the words and puts it in a um, in a uh, hierarchical model like uh, in a directic acyclic tree and uh, by that you can build a um, multiple parsing and solving engines on top that are working with that um, hierarchical model we will later see how it looks like in the program itself, but first we just um, give you an introduction about uh, the topic itself. So, so first of all, um, this DSL is um, occupying with the brown box here, this, this, this content. And then we will also uh, have a look out into the semantic field of um creating a grammar out of uh, these um these correlation in the, in, the, in the text and by that building up a ontology a relational ontology that builds for us a meaning or a context of the content of those documents so by that we are really explicitly know what the content of this document is talking about and um, can create uh, a model about about that document or or many documents if it's if it's in a in a, in a bigger um yeah in a, in a bigger context like um many documents or websites or something like that you can you can create connections in between and also with background knowledge everything that is backed in in the database or it is the knowledge that is backed um, in the background to to really uh, resolve the meaning of a document and um, there's no magic happening with um, trained grammar and trained trained words and trained meanings that have a stochastic um, probability how how much it is tending to one side so it's really explicitly defined what's the, what's the meaning inside and um, based on a model that is this is that is kind of that organically um, moving with the with the content or with the, with the context itself all right um yeah first of all what is um so this dsl is created with x text the x text is um very well known in the eclipse um, domain or, or this it is inside it's a, it's an eclipse project is funded from the eclipse foundation and and it's it's widely known inside the community eclipse community and therefore and yeah it's also very powerful in terms of creating a eclipse modeling framework model out of uh, the grammar you you are you provide and um, it also offers a huge extendability via 
um, dependency injection. Yeah, and by that, by that you you can really extend this this framework in 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 many parts. So, so it's very flexible flexible framework, and it makes it very powerful to use and to modify for your purposes. And that's what we did. We we, we used Xtext as a as a, ba a basis for our grammar that this um, parsing fast the hierarchical model. Here for for instance, a, uh, um, a pipeline up to the, the part where it is converted into this hierarchical model, this, or in other words, um, how the, the grammar is created. So first we, we provide a grammar that is defining for us the, 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 the rules uh, of this um, of the natural language. And then we creating a, an Antler model out of it and or Xtext is just doing this for us in the background and also a eco model um, from the Eclipse modeling framework. And by that, we then receive a um, Xtext and in, in integrated development environment that uh, is um, capable for to pass um, that, that um, documents based on the grammar and generate new new documents we also have a look at this so we um, have have already built use cases first use cases um, we can we can use um, already on uh, based on on our um, xtext grammar and there there are other tools and so this this platform that is already given is is a is a strong platform that is capable to build many use cases uh, you could imagine about um, on top of that platform one is just uh, what i'm already mentioned a um, grammar training and then parsing ontologies or creating ontologies um, out of the, the text and then create meanings but you don't have to be such um, uh, operate on such a high level there's also um, like more primitive use cases you can you can create like for instance you can pass documents and then create uh, requirements out of that this is already working and then um, and we are we are creating a requirements model out of it that can be easily imported then uh, with some uh, importing interfaces into let's say Draws next or, or any other um, requirement management tool. Um, you just need to provide the interface uh, for 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 that that certain tool that uses a XMI model that is generated out of that tool and converts it into that um, uh, format that uh, these uh, requirement management tools are requiring. Um, just uh, as a um, preview, we are currently working on a converter for uh, those next, and that is uh, then capable to uh, export natural language documents into those next. All right, how's the, how it is look like? It is looking, for instance, like we have for for instance a. Um, um a main sentence uh, a main sentence that is uh separated by a command and then then this next or then after that comma um a next sub sentence is uh, attached and that is again separated by a comma and then you have another um sentence attached and and that that is that is by that defining one sentence finally enclosed by a, a full stop or anything or a new line all the column uh, columns are are supported question marks and all all those standard um things in in a natural language document this is a primitive sample and um here you can see that um all these tokens that coming from the lexer are then interpreted in a higher hierarchy in a, in a kind of semantic structure that is given by the abstract syntax tree uh, right
right. So this is just a basic uh, excerpt of um, of the tokens that are interpreted like words, and then we have uh, certain certain special words uh, from the um, IT domain like camel case words or, or path, um, um, just a file path or something like that. That is then interpreted as a, um, a special word from from the IT domain. We have numbers, chapter numbers, integer numbers, float numbers with units itself, commas and so, such things or, or currencies. We can pass URLs like web addresses and uh, such things. Um, usually it's required or um, the software requires that you um, that you put a um, protocol in front of uh, the, the URL. So like HTTPS or FTP and such things, and then it is really explicitly interpreting this um, this 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 text as a URL. Also, email addresses are recognized, smileys, acronyms, um, and also it uh, it is it is has a special um, category for for a text that is, has no meaning, like multiple dashes or stars and such things that um, are um, treated as a special sentence or special token um, that is not really having a semantic meaning just more for decoration or something like that all right then uh, one hierarchy higher we have like sentences sub sentences list sentence chapter sentences bracket sentences and quotes quotes are just not parsed it's just just for instance if you want to uh, put source code in you in your document and you can just quote it out and then it is not parsed internally it's just taken as one string and um, no longer um, parsed internally all right uh, that's it just uh, a little uh, view on the abstract syntax tree when you ha have a um, Antler um, modeler with uh, which can display you the results of the abstract syntax trees, and you can see how the 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 hierarchies um, are built up. Um, all right, then we are um, just um, switching over to a live demo of the software. I'm starting it from a um, currently in status um, under development. So uh, there are also releases um, out on the Valitas um, GitHub page that are already um, in a slightly earlier version are already available uh, to use. And then when we start the program, we have this as you see our selection of documents we we have here um i just fed it with some iso standards um that um validus is frequently using in its um, business domain so so it's for our internal use we um Converted these um, these documents for internal use, and um, so by that we can create a model out of it. And uh, as you can see, this huge document um, is just passed into in entirely, and it has about two thousand. 500 lines, and also the old three. 130 is also a very huge document that has like 6,000 lines and also um, where we very proud of uh, it also covers tables so we have tables inside the documents and also the table is in a way parsed so we have table lines table rows and so on. So all these um, these objects are parsed internally, 
and um, it also is capable to um, interpret those those um, content in a certain way. Also, we have list sentences like when when you when you um, when you have a bullet point, so this is uh, marked by a star, then then this detected as a list sentence. It is not only um, reading, interpreting stars as bullet points, but also you could, um, for instance, put numbers in front of a list sentence or even uh, there are other list sentences that have, that have letters like this one. So this is also a list sentence that has a letter. And um, by that, the, the entire document is, detect, is, is, is um, parsed and, and interpreted without any errors. So also you have a, a content table. So it's not making really sense in the term, but, but it's just to show that it is really also capable to interpret um, those part of the text. So you don't really have to modify your your document um, uh, very much. Just in in slides or just some some little parts uh, and some aspects that are yeah in a way not not so well interpreted um, but usually the modification of uh, of the document itself is um, is just um, um, yeah you need to just um, just need to make minor changes where it's a bit um, maybe because if you converted that uh, the document from a PDF and then sometimes the the converter that you find in the internet just did not did not really properly parse that document from a PDF into a text, and then you have to just correct those um, errors and just yeah glitches that this tool has has produced, and then you put it you make it bring it in a clean form, and then. Then usually um, the DSL is capable to parse this uh, without any errors. As you can see, it's very, it is very um, flexible and um, capable to to understand many variations of uh, of of the spelling of your uh, text. All right. Um, When we are just just um, well, when this when this um, document has no errors inside, then it will generate a XMI model. And um, when this is done, you can you can open that Excel um, XMI model a, with the Validus process modeling tool. And um, so that process modeling tool is also based on Eclipse modeling framework, but um, it offers a tree um, or model editor that um, has a, a, a tree editor mainly with a um, property sheet that is. Um, displaying you the contents of that of that the, these objects to these um, emf objects and for instance when we just switch over to the do330 then you can see we have uh, received um, a very comprehensive um, document where we recognize uh, all those um, Elements we have seen in the analytics tool. So we we have our so here in the extended part. So we can see that the here um, with including the the the, 
the including including the content table um the the, the first introduction is is um is included these required documents unresolved dependencies are just detected numbers that uh, looks like a um, chapter reference inside the document but is turned out to be not um, a chapter number inside the document it's just then leaving or the, the current parse or the current generator is just leaving those objects inside the, the document and you just uh, can decide if you want to de de remove those objects or not um, uh, we just left it in uh, as, as a further reference if you want to pass those documents further and then just make use of those um, yeah traced traced objects that are created out of um, certain numbers that are found uh, inside the uh, document for instance you can see that first first reference was is this number 1150 and that is that is um, found in inside the document so then you see this is 2011 30 and so, so, so on so there's our numbers are that are found inside the document but have no really relation to any um, chapter of the document uh, like it is uh, formatted in, in in this this format so you have um, a introduction and then we have sub chapters and so on and then also we this is a, this is a, a list um, list entry and um, so we have um, letters a b c and then when we switch over into this chapter we see a b c and it's creating for us um, uh, this this this, um, this chapter. And when you go here and you see um, this is um, this is this is the the B. It's it's talking about uh, this this uh, sentence. All right. So, so this is um, the, the structure of uh, the requirements objects, and then we are also having cross references. So when 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 it's uh, the tool is detecting a um, like for instance here in this in this um, in this paragraph uh, the um, annex A is mentioned, and then it finds those chapter number annex A inside the document, and then refers to that. Um, and it's a tool qualification objectives and then when i um, click on this uh, on this icon locate value and i'm just instantly guided through the through the the object where it's referring to so in this term it's this annex a and um and this uh, is um, then uh, again containing a table this is uh, and so the table I, here in this display it's not um, probably um, showing up because um, the text um, is is not um, rigid and by that um, the the text is a bit shifted but usually it should be uh, in a in a real um, when you put it over into a text editor, then it will be show up um, really properly. Um, uh, in in a in a so in a really structured order that, that it's uh, again showing up uh, as a text table. And then we are we having in this table we have certain certain. Um, like for instance this and then we have certain references and then these references are showing up in, in, in as reference here's another example of the do 330 so then we are looking the tables and then we can see 
table itself. That is um, coming from our document. So here we have tables that are showing up. And these tables are getting uh, converted into um, the generator of uh, the DSL. So the DSL is then just taking that the table and then just creating references onto um, chapters that it, uh, that are found inside that that table and um, just linking them to the, the certain chapters like five five two two a so when I go there let's see appointment five 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 two sorry All right, usually show should draw up here. Um, maybe generator needs some more refinement, but um, that's the intention. Uh, need to improve it a little bit. So that's just the first use case that that is um, that is showing that uh, the tool is capable to um, to generate requirements hierarchical requirements documents out of a um, such a text document including tables and um, it's capable to sort them probably probably inside uh, such a document structure uh, hierarchical document structure down to uh, to the to the lowest chapter so so it's not really making use of all the features that, uh, that that are provided inside that model. So the model is much more comprehensive. And it's just going up to the chapter sentence or list sentence that is provided, but not deeper. So this is the first use case um, that is almost um, ready for ready for use. Oh, we are what the tool is currently um being developed so we we just um, now creating a grammar structure on top of it and then finally trying to solve a um, yeah semantic on top of that so 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 by so by that but by, by resolving the structure we we are then solving uh, the the semantics of the documents and then really um resolving the content of the document and the meaning and um, some use cases we, we we could imagine like um, uh, block file parsers um, can be a, um, requirements ide and such things um, yeah all right thank you for watching and um, see you next time